Hello everybody and welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today we are going to use the Ron Ranson palette, which I'll talk about in a moment, to color in this uh, pen and ink drawing. So this is a 9 by 12 sheet of Canson hot press paper, 100% cotton. Uh, the ink is platinum carbon ink, which is light fast and waterproof. The pen I used was the fountain pen Himalaya fountain pen. And the Ron Ranson palette will consist of raw sienna, burnt sienna, burnt umber, light red oxide, ultramarine blue, some Payne's gray, and some lemon yellow. So the purpose of this video is twofold for me to essentially just um, continue experimenting with washes over um, pen and ink drawings. And the other is to kind of convey that you really don't need a lot of different colors in your watercolor palette to get started. Um, the Ron Ranson palette is a nice basic palette that will help you get a lot done. And having a nice and easy palette will help prevent you from stressing out and worrying about what color mixtures you need. So the first wash that I did was raw sienna. The second was ultramarine. I'm going to keep it nice, fast, and loose. I'm going to mix light red and ultramarine. This is kind of my go-to mix for far distant objects. Then from there, I'm going to warm it up a little bit with some raw sienna for my closer objects. This is kind of just a practice in what's known as atmospheric perspective. As things get closer, will get warmer in color uh, and warmth. Okay, that's a little bit of burnt sienna right there. I'm going to switch over to a little bit of raw umber. Uh, sorry, raw sienna. Grab a little bit of lemon yellow. My lemon yellow for me always pushes towards green no matter what I'm doing with it. I could, I could glance at lemon yellow and it'll go green. And we'll get some burnt umber. Now we'll have to say that um, burnt sienna, I'm not quite sure if it's actually in the initial um, Ron Ransom palette. Because I believe burnt sienna can be mixed from maybe the two of those colors. But for me, it's just a convenience to have it there. So it's just become just the essential. And then here's some Payne's Gray right along the edge of the water. Now we don't have any greens on this palette. So I'll grab my lemon yellow and the ultramarine just to mix a green for y'all. We'll find a place to put that. And since we are using this squirrel mop, and we have all this down, it's already wet, so we're just going wet and wet, and it's just going to diffuse very nicely. You can also take Oh, I skipped over a complete color. Oh man, I completely apologize. Alizarin Crimson. Alizarin Crimson is also in this palette. Um, and I will try to find a place for this. I can mix it with the Payne's Gray for a little bit of a dark maroon. Usually it's used for like kind of storm clouds. And there you go. And you get kind of your 
alizarin crimson um burnt umber uh pain's gray effect in there So as you can see with a few simple passes, you can get a lot of depth and a lot of interest. On that note, let's uh, pause it and dry it off, put a mat over it, see how it looks. All right, and there you go. As you can see, you don't need a million different colors on your palette, especially when you're first starting off. Um, it's just to help make things easier to not struggle what colors to use. In fact, you probably noticed with the Alizarin Crimson, I probably didn't need to struggle to try to find a place to put that in there. So limited palettes a really great way to start off with um, watercolor painting. Hope you enjoyed. Please like, subscribe, follow. Uh, leave comments, questions, and I'll talk to you all soon.